I have a word of God that I want to share with you this morning, but before I go into the word of God, um, something that I've been praying about and seeking God about, I want to tell you that there is going to be a mighty outpouring of the Holy Spirit that is going to empower this church. Uh, I, I can share that to you in a prophetic word. I have no other, uh, no, no other uh, there, there's no blessing in, in it for me, but I want to tell you something. There is something so thick in the presence of KCA. There is such a thick presence, but we have to learn to how to unlock it, how to release it and bring it upon you. You know, it's one thing for the dark cloud to be over Elijah, but it was a whole different thing when he, heard, when he saw the, the, the cloud the size of the palm of the hand, and when he saw it, he did not say, I see a cloud. He said, I hear the sound of the abundance of rain. And over KCA, I pray that same thing over you because I'm telling you, there is a thick cloud that is going to be in your presence. I pray that someone would stand up to the plate and unlock it and unrelease it for the glory of your kingdom because it shall come forth as a blessing, not just for, these, for the people within these four walls, but it will be released as a blessing for the community around you. God has planted the church. God might use people, but God has planted to the church. And he says that the gates of hell shall not ever prevail over it. So do not judge anything, any person, any church by their current circumstance. Because God is always on work. And we thank God for that. And I just want to share that with you this morning. Let us go to a very, very familiar scripture this morning. Let's go to the book of Jonah, chapter number 1. The book of Jonah, chapter number 1. We'll be reading from verse number 17 all the way through Jonah, chapter 2, to verse number 10. The book of Jonah, chapter number 1, verse number 17, all the way, and the whole chapter of Jonah, chapter number 2. If someone could help me out reading that from the Word of God this morning. Now you know why I need till one o'clock. I'm just messing. It's a joke. Again, smile. Everybody smile in the house of God, please. Take it easy. I love to smile in the house of God. But don't let the long reading fool you this morning. I have no intention to be dragging out the service by no means because I have to catch a flight. So for that reason, we'll be going right on the word. There are times in our life that uh, seems like God has put our life on pause. You know, ever wonder, like, you know, things are not moving forward, things are not going backwards, things are not going move, moving forward, but for some reason, God has pressed the pause button in our life. There are moments when we pray for certain things, or we cry out for certain things, or we have certain expectations about certain things, and when it comes to all of those things, we feel like God would do certain things, but at the same time, it seems like God has pressed the pause button. And the thing about that, you've got to understand, is sometimes God does not put us in a pause button because he has forgotten about you, but rather he is under putting you through construction. I, I, one of the uh, things that I envy when, if I ever were a chance to live my life again, this would be one of the things would be I would love to cook. I don't know how to cook. I can, I can barely make scrambled eggs. But at the same time, just watching professionals cook, that is an amazing thing. I just love the, the, the Food Channel. But after that also, the, the other expertise that I really think about very highly is the baking field. When I say the baking field, I've tried to bake some stuff before. It didn't turn out the way it's supposed to be turned out. And my kids never ate it. But 
the thing about baking that I like is you make all that stuff and you put it in the oven and you put it in the oven and unlike cooking where you don't go back to see if it tastes good, if it's ready or anything, so a good baker would be a person that would wait, stay back and he would know exactly when to pull this cake out of the oven. In other words, if he leaves it too, if he takes it out too early, it will be undone. If he takes it too late, it would be burned out and it would be rather too brown. And at the same time, a good baker can look at the piece of cake and he knows when is the right time for you to pull that cake out. I know there's timers, I know that there's ovens, but, but at the same time, a good baker will know that the edges have come around brown and it is a good time for us to pl put his capital and pull, pull that little piece of cake down. In the same way, you got to understand one thing. Sometimes God puts us in the oven we call life. And in that oven, you might think that there is nothing happening. Nothing is progressing. But thanks be unto God, the God of our lives. He is the master baker. And when he is the master baker, he knows exactly what time he needs to pull us out. And you know the story of Jonah. Jonah's story is not something that is very unfamiliar to us. When you were a little baby itself, you learned the story about Jonah, about how Jonah and the big, and, and the big fish. And the thing about that is at the verse, at the chap, end of chapter number 2, verse number 10, it says that the Lord commanded the fish to vomit or to spit out Jonah. What should we do or how can we come to a place where God would push the pause button one more time that life would continue? What should we do so that the fish that we feel like we are in would spit us out? And one of the things that you understand is you know the story of Jonah you already are very familiar with. The story of Jonah basically says like this, that you know what, he was supposed to go to Nineveh and, then the, and he took up a fair and went the opposite way, went to Tarshish. And when he was going to Tarshish, guess what, a great storm came. And when the great storm came, every captain of the ship was in a place where they were trying to straighten the ship out to make sure that they could survive the storm. But in all of that, one of the things about Jonah was Jonah understood the reason for the storm was not because of any anything in nature it was because Jonah was heading in the wrong direction the captains of the ship try to throw stuff out pull stuff in do whatever that they can to make sure that they could straighten the ship out calm the storm but at the end of the day Jonah stepped up to the plate and said the only way that you can straighten the ship out or you can calm this thing down is by throwing me overboard as crazy as it sounds, as, as odd as it sounds, guess what? They probably tried everything that they could do. And at the very end of time, they took up Jonah and they threw him over. All of a sudden, a huge fish comes and grabs him, eats him alive. And then Jonah starts writing a psalm. A psalm that is what is the topic or the thought process that the Lord wants to bring us through today how can you make sure that the Lord will command your fish your moment in time to spit you out so that you can fulfill the purpose of God Number one, you got to understand like this, and this is going to be very, I'm going to, going to go into the old, ba old school Baptist style, go into three points and get out of your way. And the thing is, you got to understand is first thing that you see in Jonah chapter number two, verse number one, the Bible says from inside the fish, Jonah prayed unto the Lord his God. From inside the fish or from the belly of the fish that he cried out unto the Lord. One of the things that you got to recognize is this, until this very moment in time, Jonah had an interaction with God before in this this particular scripture but at the same time in all of this you will never see that Jonah ever bowed down his feet and bowed down his knees and went to God in prayer but now he has come through a very distressful situation in life and he has come to a place where he has starts to pray you got to understand one thing when you're coming to pray it should never be out of a place of distress but rather whenever God speaks to you you and I should come to a place where we are consistent in prayer as well the first way that you can understand that the Lord will command that the belly that, 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 that you'll be spit out of the belly of the fish is to make sure that you have a prayer life even 
അല്ലെങ്കിൽ നമ്മുടെ ജീവിതത്തിൻ്റെ ഓരോ പ്രശ്നത്തിൻ്റെ മധ്യയിൽ നമ്മൾ എന്തോ അടുത്ത നിമിഷം എന്തോ സംഭവിക്കുന്നുള്ളത് അല്ല ഒന്നും സംഭവിക്കുന്നില്ല ആ നിമിഷത്തിൻ്റെ മധ്യയിൽ നിന്ന് ഈ മത്സ്യ വയറ്റിൽ കിടക്കുന്ന ആ അനുഭവത്തിൽ നിന്നും കർത്താവ് നമ്മളെ പുറത്താക്കണമെങ്കിൽ ആദ്യത്തെ കാര്യമാണ് പ്രാർത്ഥന യു ഗാർ അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് വൺ തിങ് nothing that you will see in this in your english bible or in your malayalam bible i want to share with you in chapter number chapter number 1 verse number 17 the bible says that the lord provided a great fish to swallow jonah and jonah was in the inside the fish's belly for 3 days and 3 nights verse number 2 chapter number uh, chapter number 2 verse number 1 we see now that the jonah is praying inside the fish's belly the fish comes eats him up he's inside the belly Jonah chapter 2 verse 1 he is praying inside the belly what is the difference pastor there is a small key thing that you would understand when you learn and understand the hebrew language you will see that hebrew nouns have a particular particularity to them what is that characteristic in other words it has male and female connotations when the hebrew language uses noun for example to in today's language if you were to call someone Dan- daniel you know daniel is a male but if you call somebody daniela guess what she or he, it is a female gabriel gabriel is a male gabriela is a female so you have you can easily understand the connotation of being a male or female but when the holy spirit was writing the scripture in jonah chapter number 1 verse number 17 that hebrew term that is used for the term belly is dog or in other words a male connotation dog is the word that in chapter number 2 verse number 1 you will see that dan I mean, jonah prayed in the fish's belly at that time the connotation that is used in the for the term belly is daga or what we call a female terminology what is the difference pastor time is fleeting i want to run right through this the difference is this that you got to understand for all of us men we understand when we eat something your intent with what you eat is so that you would go into your stomach but guess what all of us men's stomach is what we call a graveyard and the men said nothing um but when it comes to a woman's stomach There is something peculiarity about a woman's stomach. It's what we call a womb. What a man is in the wire net in the kimball. Other room wire in the water bar in the column. I think it was a good week to live. I did not know the man woman. But single or street wire in a kitchen. The kimball other garba patra to know the kind of all or who. that that is what a, a woman's stomach is capable of it is a birthing place what happened to the fish for it to become its belly to transform from a male graveyard mentality to a female birthing possibility what happened where for that fish's belly to have a male graveyard mentality to become in the very next verse that its womb or its stomach has been given a birthing capability maranathinu tullamayirikkunna shavakuri onnam adhyayam 17th vakyathil randam adhyayathinu onnam vakyathil jeevan porappidipikkan kollavunna oru oru womb aaguvan vendi ഒരു ഉദരമാകുവാൻ വേണ്ടി എന്തുവാണ് വ്യത്യാസം ഇതിൻ്റെ മധ്യേ യോന പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ചു അത് മനസ്സിലാക്കിയ ഒരു ഓർത്ത് ഞാൻ ദൈവത്തെ സ്തുതിക്കുന്നു നിന്റെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ ഏതെല്ലാം കഷ്ടത നീ കടന്നു പോകുന്നുണ്ട് ഇന്ന് ര പകൽക്കാലം ദൈവദാസ ദൈവദാസി നിങ്ങളോട് ഒരു കാര്യം പറയാനുണ്ട് നിന്നെ എന്തോ വന്ന് വിഴുങ്ങി നീ എനിക്കറിയത്തില്ല നീ എന്തോ എൻ്റെ മധ്യ നിൽക്കുന്ന എനിക്കറിയത്തില്ല പക്ഷെ അതിൻ്റെ മധ്യേ നീ ഒന്ന് പ്രാർത്ഥിക്കാൻ തീരുമാനിച്ചിട്ടുണ്ടെങ്കിൽ ദൈവം നീ നിൽക്കുന്ന അന്തരീക്ഷത്തിന് ഒരു വ്യതിയാനം വരുത്തും ഒരു വ്യത്യാസം വരുത്തും ശത്രു നിനക്ക് എതിരായിട്ട് എന്തെല്ലാം ഒരുക്കി വെച്ചിട്ടുണ്ടോ ആ ആയുധത്തിൽ തിരിക്കുവാൻ വേണ്ടി നിന്റെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ വല്ലം ഫലം വരുത്തുവാൻ വേണ്ടി ർത്താവ് അതേ ആയുധം തിരിച്ചു മറക്കി ഒരു ഉദരമായിട്ട് തീർക്കും എന്നുള്ള കർത്താവാണ് നമ്മുടെ കർത്താവ് 
difference is prayer. When you are standing and when in, in that place of life where you're wondering what is going to happen, the only thing that you can possibly imagine is this, that death is before me. Matter of time before Jonah is done. Matter of time before Jonah is done with this life. Matter of time before Jonah is even caught up whether wherever he might go. But understand one thing, in between all of that, in the midst of the situation, while death is looking at his face, eye to eye, Jonah made up his mind. This would be a good time to pray. And when he prayed, guess what? God took the atmosphere, the atmosphere of the graveyard, the atmosphere of death, and he shifted it around and made it into a birthing place. You got to understand one thing. When God is doing something in your life, you might think that this is the end. But today, the Holy Spirit wants to tell you, God has brought you here for such a time as this. You know why? Your prayer will shift. Ipporum tarshishil oru vajna oru pravajaga de avishamunda. Ni inna malsetin de udrathe karaku anengi thanne inna pagal kalan chindikinam. Ipporum tarshishil anengil deiva vajnam prasoyengil vere aar deiva terinjadathilla. Ninne matramana. Understand one thing, when you are coming into the house of God, when you go into your prayer closet, there is a power that comes out through prayer and a persistent prayer. When you sit in your prayer closet, you don't have to come to church. That is a moment where you and your God only communes. It is a moment where the bridegroom and the bride comes together. It is the moment of intimacy. It is a moment where you can birth whatever God has planted and purposed in your life child of God when you are stuck in a place that you're hoping that God would command that this situation will spit you out or vomit you out the first thing that you ought to do is to bow your knees in prayer number two thing and time is fleeting before me and I want to go right real quick the Bible says in chapter, chapter number two verse number four it says like this I said I have been banished from your sight Yet I will look again toward your holy temple. Not only should we pray, but you got to understand that God will give you an opportunity to pursue your purpose. God will give you an opportunity to pursue your purpose. Here is Jonah sat, sitting inside the belly of the fish, sitting inside the belly of the fish, and when he's sitting inside the belly of the fish, Jonah comes to his senses, just like the, uh, the, the prodigal son had come into his senses. Jonah comes to his senses. He knows why in the world I am in a place like where I am right now, and he understood that he is operating in utter disobedience to the voice of God. But guess what? God gives him an opportunity. What is this opportunity? The opportunity to shift his life, to transform his life so that he would come to a place of repentance, that he would come to a place of, 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 of saying that God, here I am. I am here to fulfill your vow. The Bible says like this, I know God that I have messed up. I thank God for people who can tell that honestly and faithfully to God. Lord, I. Not calling it a weakness or a belahinada, being honest with God. I know I have messed up. And he says like this in verse number four, but if you give me what, I'm, I'm putting this in the Sibi translation, hey, but if you give me one more chance, I will look towards your holy temple. You got to understand one thing. Sometimes God presses the pause button on our life because of the fact that, you know what? We have, we, have, we have to come to a place of repentance and acknowledging that we are walking away from God. I know it's going to be hard to find people in the church to say that you're, to acknowledge that you're walking away from God. But everybody, if you're truthful to yourself, don't raise your hand, don't look at nobody, just look straight at me. But every one of us in this room can honestly say there are moments in our life that me and you, we walked away from God. That we have messed up from the obedience of the, the, the word of God. We have been messed up from, the obe from, from obeying whatever God has placed in our life. We have messed up from the, we are messed up from the neck up. We are, we are some crazy folk but let me tell you something, even if you don't repent to your pastor, even if you don't tell your spouse or your children or your parents, I want to tell you something. There are times in our life that we need to God and say, God I have messed up. Kartave nyan tetipui. 
അല്ല കർത്താവ് എൻ്റെ ബലഹീനത എന്നെ കയറി പിടികൂടി നിന്ന് വലിയ ഫാൻസി വേർഡ്സ് ഒന്നും ഉപയോഗിക്കാതെ കർത്താവ് ഞാൻ അങ്ങ് തെറ്റിപ്പോയി സ്വന്തം ഭാര്യയോട് പറയണ ഭർത്താവിനോട് പറയുന്ന കുഞ്ഞുങ്ങളോട് പറയണ ഭാഷയോട് പറയണ ആരും പറയണ ദൈവ സന്നിധിയിൽ ചെന്ന് പറയ കർത്താവ് എനിക്ക് തെറ്റ് പറ്റിപ്പോയി അതിനകത്ത് ഒരു കുറവുമില്ല ഓൾ ഹാവ് സിൻഡ് ആൻഡ് ഫോൾ ആൻഡ് ഷോർട്ട് ഓഫ് ദ ഗ്ലോറി ഓഫ് ഗോ യുവർ സിൻ ഡസ് നോട്ട് സർപ്രൈസ് ഗോഡ് നിന്റെ പാപം ദൈവത്തെ വലിയ അത്ഭുതകരമാണ് അയ്യോ നീ പാപം ചെയ്തോ എന്ന് ചോദിക്കത്തില്ല നിനക്ക് അറി കർത്താവ് നീ പാപം ചെയ്യുന്നതിന് മുമ്പേ കർത്താവ് നിന്റെ ചിന്ത ഓൾറി അറിഞ്ഞു കഴിഞ്ഞു അതുകൊണ്ട് ദൈവസന്നിധി ചെന്ന് കർത്താവ് എൻ്റെ എൻ്റെ ഞാൻ പാപം ചെയ്തു നീയും എനിക്കൊരു അവസരം കൂടെ കിട്ടുകയാണെങ്കിൽ ഞാൻ നിൻ്റെ വിശുദ്ധ മന്ദിരത്തിലേക്ക് ഞാൻ മടങ്ങി വരാം ഇന്ന് പകൽക്കാലം ദൈവജനത്തോട് ഞാൻ പറയട്ടെ എനിക്കറിയത്തില്ല നിന്റെ ജീവിതത്തിൽ നീ എന്തോനും വിഷമിക്കുന്നു എന്തോനും ഭാരപ്പെടുന്നു എനിക്കറിയത്തില്ല പക്ഷെ കർത്താവ് എൻ്റെ ജീവിതത്തിലുള്ള കുറവുകളും എൻ്റെ മിസ്കാൽക്കുലേഷനും കൊണ്ടും എ നിൻ്റെ പദ്ധതിയിൽ നിന്ന് ഞാൻ കർത്താവ് ഞാൻ ഓടിയതുകൊണ്ടുള്ള ഫലമാണ് ഞാൻ ഇന്ന് അനുഭവിക്കുന്നത് കർത്താവ് എൻ്റെ ജീവിതം എനിക്ക് ചില തെറ്റ് പെറ്റിപ്പോയി അതുകൊണ്ട് ഇന്ന് പകൽക്കാലം സ്വർഗീയ പിതാവ് നീ എന്നോടൊന്ന് ക്ഷമിക്കണമേ ക്ഷമിച്ച് ഞാനത് പുറത്ത് ഇറങ്ങി വന്നാൽ നിൻ്റെ വിശുദ്ധ മന്ത്രമായിരിക്കും എൻ്റെ ലക്ഷ്യം നിൻ്റെ വിശുദ്ധ മന്ദിരം വെറും നിന്റെ മന്ദിരത്തിൽ ആലയത്തിൽ വരുവാനല്ല നിന്റെ വിശുദ്ധ ആലയത്തിൽ വിശുദ്ധിയോടെ മടങ്ങി വരുവാൻ ആണ് എന്റെ ആഗ്രഹം ശുദ്ധീകരണം കൂടാതെ ആരും ദൈവത്തെ കാണുകയില്ല എന്നിട്ട് മൂന്നാം അധ്യായം ചാപ്റ്റർ ത്രീ വേർഷൻ നമ്പർ വൺ ദ ലോഡ് സെസ് ലൈക്ക് ബൈബിൾ സെസ് ലൈക്ക് ദൻ ദ വേർഡ് ഓഫ് ദ ലോഡ് കെയിം ടു ജോണ എ സെക്കൻഡ് ടൈം യഹോവയുടെ അറളപ്പാട് രണ്ടാം പ്രാവശ്യം യോനയ്ക്ക് ഉണ്ടായി അണ്ടർസ്റ്റാൻഡ് വൺ തിങ് വി ആർ റെക്കഗ്നൈസ് വൺ തിങ് വി ആർ ഓൾ സെർവിങ് എ സെക്കൻഡ് ചാൻസ് ഗോഡ് വി ആർ ഓൾ സെർവിങ് എ സെക്കൻഡ് ചാൻസ് ഗോഡ് ദ മോമെൻറ്റ് യു ആർ ഐ ആർ വില്ലിങ് ടു സേ ഗോഡ് ഐ ഹാവ് മെസ്ഡ് അപ്പ് വെൻ യു ആർ വില്ലിങ് ടു സേ ദ ലോഡ് ഐ റിപ്പെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് മൈ സിൻ വെൻ യു ആർ വില്ലിങ് ടു സേ ദറ്റ് ഗോഡ് ദറ്റ് ഐ ഹാവ് ഐ ഹാവ് സ്ക്രൂഡ് അപ്പ് മൈ ലൈഫ് ലോഡ് ഐ ആം വില്ലിങ് ടു കം ഔട്ട് ഓഫ് ദിസ് ട്രബൾ ആൻഡ് ദിസ് ട്രബ് and face my face towards the holy temple in other words i am willing to walk in the holiness of the word of god then i tell you god will speak to you again a second time here is a man that had committed sin like david his man was a murderer he was an adulterer yet he said lord father if you would open my 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 my, my lips so that i could praise you understand one thing even after he was a murderer even after he was an adulterer even after he was, he was a bad father all these things yet the heavens testified saying he is a man after my own heart in other words god is not surprised that you've messed up that you have screwed up because you know what we are all living in this world under the, uh, the under the power of the flesh but understand in all of that god is expecting a comeback oru madangi varavana kartavu inda pagalkalam aagrahikkune inda pagalkalam യഥാർത്ഥമായിട്ട് നമ്മൾ മടങ്ങി വരേണ്ടതുപോലെ വ മടങ്ങി വന്നില്ലെങ്കിൽ ഇന്നൊരു സുവർണ അവസരമാണ് ദൈവസന്നിധിയിൽ കർത്താവ് ഞാൻ ഇതാ വരുന്നു ഞാൻ പാപിയാണ് ഞാൻ പാപം ചെയ്തു ഞാൻ നിൻ്റെ നിയമം ലംഘിച്ചു എനിക്ക് ദോഷം വന്നു നീ എന്നെ സഹായിക്കണമേ അങ്ങനത്തെ ഒരു തുറന്ന പ്രാർത്ഥന കേൾക്കുവാൻ ഇന്നും സ്വർഗത്തിൻ്റെ കാത് കേൾക്കുന്നുണ്ട് അല്ലാതെ ഹിപ്പക്രിറ്റിക്കൽ പ്രേയേഴ്സ് പ്രാർത്ഥിച്ച് കർത്താവ് ഇന്ന ബലഹീനതൊക്കെ വന്ന് കർത്താവ് അത് ബലഹീനം ആ ജഡത്തൊക്കെ നീ കൊല്ലണമെന്നൊക്കെ അങ്ങല്ല സഹോദര അല്ല സഹോദരി കർത്താവ് ഞാൻ പാപം ചെയ്തു ഞാൻ ദോഷമായിട്ട് സംസാരിച്ചു ദോഷമായിട്ട് ചിന്തിച്ചു ദോഷമായിട്ട് പ്രവർത്തിച്ചു ഇന്ന് പകൽക്കാലം എനിക്കൊരു സെക്കൻഡ് ചാൻസ് നീ തരണമേ ഗാഡ് ഈസ് എ ഗാഡ് ഓഫ് സെക്കൻഡ് chances not only should you pursue god in prayer but you should be willing to pursue him in the purpose that god has given to you and after that the bible says like this in verse number 9 and before i even go into that you got to understand one thing when for us to come to a place of giving ourselves and our will to god you got to understand when you are breaking the law of god you are fighting against god Let me say that again when you break the law of god you are fighting against god jesus when he was having a bout with the devil in the wilderness when he was fighting the devil he spoke with such confidence you know why he spoke with such confidence he spoke with such confidence because god, he knew god was with him you can always fight the devil because you understand and recognize that the power of god is always with you but what do you do 
when you're rebelling against God? Who do you think will come to help you? Um, let me tell you something. Let all the armies in the world, all the kings in the world, and all the powers of the world come in your favor. But if you are rebelling against God, child of God, I want to guarantee you right now that God is going to win. We should never be in a position we are rebelling against God. God will give you chances after chances after chances, but don't be continue to be staying in that rebellion, and that rebellion will only come back to haunt you and to haunt me. That's why Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane, he knew that now I'm going to have a small confrontation with God. Father, if it is possible, take this cup away from me. Take this suffering away from me. But Jesus was smart enough to say that, Lord, not my my will but thine be done he knew that this was going to go if it, if it ever got into a place of conflict it was not a conflict that he was going to win he was not going to win we need to come to a place where we rekindle our vows with God let me tell you something many a times in our in our fleshly bodies we will come to a place that when we get into trouble when we go to get into struggles you got to understand one thing that we will be in a place where we will put all kinds of vows before God God will bring you out of your struggle out of your pain and then we tend to forget our vows child of God this morning I want to tell you whatever vow you made before God it is time that we remember them and Fulfill those vows before the next struggle comes and hits our life. And understand one thing. Not only should you be in a place where you're persistent in your prayer. That you should, not, that you should also pursue your purpose. But last but not least in verse number 9 the Bible says. But I with a song of thanksgiving will sacrifice to you. What I have vowed I will make good. Because the salvation belongs. Or salvation comes from the Lord. Our Pratana Matramella, Manasandra Matramella, Pashangil Imalsit in the Vital Katunda, Yona Urara the Nodagachu Yellam Sheri Aitala, Yona Ara the Chad Yellam Perfect I carry it to Karta in the Sakshat and Summing and Karta Sakshat and Summing and they would take out the Ara the Kam Allah Yona the Manager. Yona the Manager carry wonder. There is a thing that Jonah decided. Jonah decided this is the best time to praise God. Because the thing is, Jonah came to the understanding that, you know what, life could be worse than it is right now. Jonah explains that in verse number 5. He says like this, The engulfing waters threatened me. The deep surrounded me. Seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the roots of the mountains I sank down, and the earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought my life up from the pit, O oh Lord my God. The, the power of that storm you should never underestimate because you can understand just because Jonah was thrown into the water does not mean that the storm ended but rather you got to understand it got only worse for Jonah Jonah was thrown into the water and when he was thrown into the water the, the storm was inside the water kind of like a tsunami and it took him in circles and not only was it going in circles this man cannot breathe this man cannot do anything but at the same time to add to that the enemy comes to a place where he says that you know what I'm going to put seaweeds around your throat to kill you and to choke you and to die you know what that very moment Jonah probably opened his eyes and when he opens his eyes verse number six says that you know what I saw the roots of the mountains that's how deep I went and you know what the earth was in a position to swallow me up to the point where I will never come back but but Lord, you saved me out of that pit. You saved me 
out of that pit. You know what will make you praise God in the most craziest of times and the most oddest of times? When you look bad and look back and think what the Lord has brought you through. When you look back and understand what God has brought you through, you will have no choice but to praise God. Let me tell you something, child of God, we human beings have short-term memory. You know what short-term memory is? We think about God and His goodness and His greatness and we say testimony, lift our hands on a Sunday and the next Sunday comes around, we forget what God did two months ago, two weeks ago, two days ago. Child of God, let me tell you something. When the enemy came against you, he came in like a flood. What does that mean, Pastor? He had every intention to destroy you. He made sure that in the storm that you would die to a position you will never come back. In the storm, guess what? He tried to choke you. He tried to hold you down to make sure you will not breathe. He made sure that you can put you at the brink of death, at the bottom of the pit but all of a sudden here comes God here comes God in an unnatural way going back to Jonah chapter number one verse number 17 and I like how it's written in the NIV version the Bible says but the Lord provided a great fish to swallow Jonah in other words you got to understand one thing Everybody would look at this fish as punishment. But when I look about what God had put me through, what the devil had put me through, the Lord had an option to send me a big fish as protection. Shatru nindu avane tadaya wa mendi, avane illa dhaku wa mendi. Bhoomide etum lowest part kondo yi, avane melal kondu varan, tirich varan vayyata sthidhi vannu pol. Ida virunu maha ur malsiyam. A malsiyam vannu avane virungu. I love that the King James Version says, he God had appointed the fish to come. And the fish had come and swallowed him. In the Pagal Kalam, they was appeared. Nindu parayan ullur kairi vannu nariyamo. Nindu prashnathu na madhye, nindu karthavi yendu ni nyani the custom sahikaran vannu namlu chundi. Logam Vidikim Arikim, either will you shiksha with the Illa Sahodra, Illa Sahodri, Nine Devan Kairdu and Kanda or Malsimana, Illengil, need in the Puraturangi Tundarthing, Pishaj in the Illadaki, Pishad in the Jeevan Editor, Nin the Pada Theatre, Nin the Illadakan or Sagala Periwadigal, Puratu Nilkambolana, Devamida or Malsete, Nin the Munbagi Aikun, in the Bagal Karan or Parade, Patros on a Karagra the Karnapur, a Karagas or Sametan Angel, Avan Sukamat Karnoranga. Karam and the Nariamo, Kartave, E. Karagrahaman, Porathan in the end of Tala Veteran than a column pay them. Only Livina did not any good Surakshi the Madrigana, any Kiran or Rangamelo, Porathan Garana and a Kartave, Epol Verum, Epol on the Vadar Mutum, Epol and a Kondo Nola, Chindagulum, Porathan Garana, Lokopasha, Agat the Garanal, our Niveram Pogan, the Lamal, Avalavere, Eric Sukamad, Karan Oranganok, in the Pagal Kalan Yanulo Parade, Ni, the Karagra, the Karakanian Arinilla, Edo, Avenla, the Karakanian Arinilla, in the Pagal. Ni Kartavro Chodian Chain and a Pagara, Kartave, Yene Ilada Quan Shatru, or the Pani Kanigal Orikipol, Yene Kardu or Mendi Ni Orikiva Chirikani, Malsatana in the Bagal Karjan, they were taste to the Gin Chalapol Roga Maricuma Malsium, Chalapan Talamora Laricuma Malsium, Chalpa Samambati Maricum in the Malsium, Yendo and Yanarinilla, Pasha had in the Maddea Gadakambol in the Bagal Kalam, Yehove Kustotter and Chivanokumo. I want to tell the church this one thing that you got to understand that many a times the world would write off this fish as punishment but see it through the eyes of God it is not punishment it is a provision it is not punition, punishment it is protection it is not punishment it's preservation Nine protectina or over regular. Chalpoka no chindica and a cartavi piney with his young Katakanda Villa Gari on the wonders of Hodra, the port on it on the Niniku went to the chicken in the Kani Ni Kanditilla, Niakataka to catch there. And do some Julie want to work at a car. Out of Chadna, Illa the Prussian of Menukundago. I want a Kani Vida di Pan Mendi, Devium Ur Malsete, Kalpichu. Devium Ur Prasna de Kalpichu. 
ദൈവം ഒരു 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 മത്സ്യത്തെ ഒരുക്കി വെച്ചു and then when he came to the place where he was persistent in his prayer god changed the things around so that it became a womb in the sight of god when he remained persistent in his prayer he realized that i need to pursue the purpose that god has given in my life that i would repent and go after god and not while i while i do that also while i am stuck in this place with all this uck and yuck all around me kidneys in one way liver the other way stomach the other way it is an ugly situation up in here if i open my mouth stuff might even fill up my mouth but let me tell you something in this ugly ucky situation jona made up his mind that i will praise and sing a song of thanksgiving unto the lord because i realize salvation comes from the lord then the lord commanded jona to be vomited on dry ground what is that belly's fish I'm mean, the fish's belly this morning i don't know what it might be whatever it might be hang tight pray to god shift the atmosphere come to a place of repentance and above all that during this time this quiet time this ugly moment this crazy moment do not forget to praise god because he dwells upon the praises of his people he dwells upon the praises of his people and when you praise him the presence of god shall come down and he will command the fish to spit you out god bless you